Stories with a Voice Like This presents The Three Bears, published by John E. Potter and Company. Once upon a time, three bears lived together in a cave in a great forest. A great bear, a middle-sized bear, and a little bear. They were much better off than bears are in general, for they each had a chair to sit upon and an earthen bowl to eat out of, and a spoon to eat with, and a bed to lie upon. The great bear had a great chair, and a great bowl, and a great bed. The middle-sized bear had a middle-sized bowl, and a middle-sized chair, and a middle-sized bed to lie on. And the little bear had a nice little chair to sit in, and a pretty little bowl to eat his porridge out of, and a smart little bed on which he could curl himself up and go to sleep. One day the big bear said to the little bear, Come, my little friend, we will go out for a walk. And he asked the middle-sized bear to go with them. So the middle-sized bear washed the little bear's face and made him ready, and they all went out together. They had not been gone long before a little girl who lived not far off and who was called Silver Hair from the light color of her beautiful curls happened to come running into the wood. She had started off from her home, intending to have a fine ramble through the forest and to run after butterflies and pluck cowslips and primroses to make into garlands, and coming by chance to the bear's house, she peeped in. She was very much surprised at all the arrangements in the bear's house, and most of all, to see that there was a big chair and a middle-sized chair and a little wee chair at the table and on the table itself a big jar of porridge, and a middle-sized jar of porridge, and a little tiny jar of porridge. All these had been prepared for the entertainment of the big, and the middle-sized, and the little bear, when they came home from their walk. For a time, little Silverhair was content to watch these strange things. But soon she began to be tired of merely looking, and thought she would like to taste the porridge. So she threw her flowers away, and sat down in the big chair, but it was too tall for her. And then she sat in the middle-sized chair, but that was too hard. And then she tried the little chair and found it to be exactly the thing. Then first she tried the big pan of porridge, but it burnt her mouth dreadfully, and it made her scream out. And then she tried the middle-sized jar, but that was no better, for it was all cold and clammy, and Silverhair did not care to take more than just one spoonful. But when she came to taste the little tiny bowl of porridge, it was so very good and sweet that she sat in the little bear's chair, eating away at the little bear's porridge, and never left off till there was not a single spoonful remaining for the poor little bear when he should come home. Silverhair had just finished the porridge when the little bear's chair broke down under her weight and she was thrown upon the floor on her back. She did not care much about that for in an instant she had jumped up again and was dancing on the chair, or rather the broken remains of it. Little Silverhair soon spied the ladder that led to the upper story in the bear's house, where their sleeping room was. She scrambled up this ladder and was surprised to see in the upper room a large-sized bed, a middle-sized bed, and a little bed. The child felt very tired after all her running about and dancing in the wood and thought she would like to lie down and rest on one of these beds. She tried the big bed first, but it was too high for her at the head, so she jumped off again. She next tried the middle-sized bed, but that was too high for her at the foot, and she could not rest quietly upon it. At last she tried the little bed, and that suited her so exactly and was so comfortable that she lay there watching the flies as they buzzed about the room until, overcome by weariness, she fell fast asleep. In the meantime, the three bears came home and soon found out that something was wrong. The big bear cried out in his great big voice, "'Somebody has been at my porridge!' And the middle-sized bear said in his middle voice, not very loud nor very low, "'Somebody has been at my porridge!' And the little bear tilted up his jar and squeaked out in his tiny voice, "'Somebody has been eating at my porridge and eaten it all up!' Then they looked around the room, and the big bear growled out, "'Somebody has been sitting in my chair!' And the middle-sized bear grumbled, "'Somebody has been sitting in my chair!' And the little bear cried with a doleful little whine, 
somebody has been sitting in my chair and broken it all to bits. Then they went up into the bedroom, and the great bear growled, Somebody's been lying on my bed. And the middle bear grumbled, Somebody's been lying on my bed. And the little tiny bear squeaked out, Somebody's been lying in my bed, and here she is. Little Silverhair awoke with a start at the noise made by this fiery little bear, and she was terribly frightened when she saw the great bear and the middle-sized bear gazing at her in wonder. She jumped up in a hurry, and seeing that the window was open, leaped right out of it into the forest below. The bears all ran to the window and started out after her, but in an instant she had jumped up again and was running away home through the wood as hard as she could, leaving the bears looking after her in astonishment. Then they thought it all so funny that they took hands and danced round and round together. The End <laughs>